Hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you about the five major mistakes I made when I started my business 12 years ago. So let's jump in, we've got tons to cover. All right, for those of you that are new to this channel, welcome, my name is Janelle Copeland and I am the founder of the award-winning bakery, The Cake Mamas. I sold my bakery last year to be able to coach and consult and help small business owners like you take their passions and turn them into profitable businesses. So on this channel, we share amazing tips like this so that you can learn from my mistakes and avoid them at all costs and create major success in your business. Let's jump in. All right, mistake number one is going to be around partnerships. For those of you that don't know, the Cake Mamas, with an S, um, was founded by me and a partner. And whether you're trying to start a business with a friend, a family member, someone you care about, maybe someone you went to culinary school with, or maybe it's just a colleague or an investor, you definitely need a partnership agreement. And I can do an entire separate video talking about partnerships just to give you kind of my insight. But for this particular video, the five major mistakes I made, I would say the first major one was not having those difficult conversations with my partner that we should have had in the very beginning. And if you wanna know how the Cake Mamas came to be, you can head over to the Push Podcast and go directly to episode number five. It's how I started my business with absolutely nothing. I think it'll be entertaining, enlightening, and uh, it'll give you some insight as to who I started the business with, which you'll get a kick out of, and um, why I think this is so important. So. Fast forward about a year into our partnership, we decided that it wasn't really working out for a number of reasons, but things we didn't do in the very beginning when we decided to enter the partnership were have those difficult conversations around what would happen to the business if one of us wanted to leave. And that's what I'm suggesting for you. I could again give you a list of different things that you should be talking about, topics of discussion. I'll save those for another video. But having um, a really solid plan in place with a partner agreement and just talking over those difficult topics are going to be necessary steps that you need to take if you're entering into any sort of partnership. When I say difficult conversations, those could be conversations around money. When you start a business, it takes a lot of money. So who's gonna be financially responsible? What if one of you has better credit than the other? Um, at some point, you might have issues with leadership. Your style of leadership might be different than your partner, and it could feel oftentimes like maybe there's a mom and a dad who are managing you know, kids, your employees, and it can just feel like you're not on the same page sometimes. So having conversations around money, around leadership, Leadership, around investments, around where you wanna take the company and what your goals are and what happens if one of you no longer is in alignment with the goals that you established in the beginning because people change, things change, and so being able to revisit those difficult conversations um, is something that you'll need to do, but having those difficult conversations from the very beginning is my tip number one for you. Partnerships can be tricky, but I find that if you avoid having the discomfort in the beginning, it's gonna create so much frustration in the end when problems start to arise. And trust me, I don't wish it upon you, but problems will come up in business. So have those difficult conversations in the very beginning. Major mistake number two is around trademarking. I see so many people also make this mistake, but you need to know this. You can trademark your business, your company logo, um, and the name in your state, your current state. So for example, I'm in California, I could get a state issued trademark, 
but that will only protect me in California. So I later got a federal trademark, which protects you in your entire country. However, a year into the business, after we had been on TV, after we started to gain some traction on social media, I was starting to get some messages from followers that there was another The Cake Mamas operating in another country. And when I reached out to them and tried to contact my attorney, I then realized that I did not have a global trademark or a trademark in that country. So it turns out you can't actually get a trademark that covers you everywhere. You have to get individual country trademarks for the countries you want to protect yourself in. So for example, if I'm in the United States, I'm specifically speaking to English um, speaking customers. I could have decided that I wanted to get a federal trademark in the United States, but I also should have probably chosen the most popular English speaking countries and also registered a trademark in those countries as well. So take it from me, trademarking and protecting your brand is the single most important thing you can do. And if you are starting out a business because you hope to be a big deal, which I'm sure most of you do, then you wanna protect your business. It's gonna cost you a lot more in the long run to try to fight with someone, um, to gain the rights back to your name or your business or your logo. So just take precautionary measures in the very beginning to protect yourself. You can look at the comments below and I will link a link to LegalZoom, which is how we trademarked our business. It's super easy. It is a little costly if you start to trademark in multiple countries, but again, it's gonna save you so much headache and frustration in the long run. So it's definitely worth every penny. All right, major mistake number three was co-mingling my money. And here's what I mean by that. I should have opened a business bank account in the very, very beginning so that I could track and monitor the initial investments that I made in my business. But instead, I was using my personal bank account and all of my personal money to buy all of the pans and all of the supplies and all of the ingredients and stuff that I needed to start my business. Now, while it's true that in order to start a business, you actually have to buy some things, what I'm suggesting is you start a business bank account and you make a personal investment into that business account. So you kind of would get two benefits. One, you'd put yourself on a budget and you would know exactly how much to the penny you're spending on necessities for your business. And number two, it would kick you off with really good habits in the beginning to help you track and monitor expenses and income. So again, you're gonna probably need to make some sort of initial investment on behalf of yourself into your business in the beginning. But if you keep yourself on a budget um, and remind yourself that eventually that well of investing will run out, right? So you can only put so much money into the business before you expect for the business to make money to start sustaining itself. That's a huge mistake that I see lots of people in the baking industry in particular make is that they take tons of money from their personal household and they just keep throwing money into this business but if you're not tracking and monitoring and then also expecting the business to at some point, one, pay you back and two, sustain itself, then you're not really setting yourself up to be a proper business that's generating income and profitability or, you know, it just might not make sense. So track and monitor from the very beginning and don't commingle. Mistake number four was not establishing my business credit soon enough. Again, if you go to the Push Podcast and you listen to episode number five, you will probably learn very quickly that my husband and I started the business because we both lost our high paying corporate jobs and we were forced to figure out a way to make money to support our family. But by losing our jobs, we were forced to file bankruptcy. So I started a business in a terrible time. We were in a recession. Um, I had no credit and so it never allowed me to be able to take a loan out. Had I known then what I know now about building corporate credit, I would have done these simple things. So tip number one is register your business. You need to register as either a corporation, S-corp, C-corp, or an LLC. 
After you register your business, you're going to get an EIN number from your government. That is basically your business's social security number. You're gonna need that to build credit and you're also gonna need that to open a business bank account. So register the business, get an EIN, and then open a business bank account. The next thing you're gonna do is register your business with Dun & Bradstreet. There are many options. Dun & Bradstreet will try to sell you a bunch of stuff, but you need to register and get a Dun's number so that you can start to build your credit. And then the last thing that you're gonna do is you're going to work with vendors that allow you to make payments on inventory or equipment or whatever it is that the company sells. So a good example of that would be Uline. Uline is a great place to buy boxes or crinkle paper or other things for shipping. They also do like a 30 day payment thing and they also report your payments to Dun & Bradstreet. So if you are doing that consistently with other vendors for about a year, you will be working in the background on building your business credit. The reason business credit is so important is because at some point you are going to need some money for your business. You could be going through a slow season and all of a sudden your refrigerator breaks or some equipment breaks and you need to desperately replace it. To avoid having to use your own personal credit, which again, remember when I started my business, I didn't have personal credit, so I was in a world of trouble. I could have leveraged my business credit. I could have walked into the bank that I banked with and I could have said, hey, I've been banking with you for a year. I pay all my bills on time. Here's how much money my company generates and I need to take an equipment loan out. I would have been approved pretty instantly. So definitely establish your business credit. That is a huge mistake that I hope you don't make. Major mistake number five is not tracking and monitoring my expenses and my income with a system that set me up to be able to do taxes really easily at the end of the year. So in the very beginning, as I told you, I commingled my money, but I made lots of investments that I didn't know were write-offs. So that would be kind of also in alignment with tip number five, which is get really good at tracking and monitoring and have a system. Also have a CPA or an accountant that is telling you from the very beginning what things are write-offs. So for example, a lot of business owners don't know that a portion of your culinary school can be written off, all of your courses that you take, your meals and entertainment. Here's a great example. When we first decided we were gonna start a bakery, we went to Magnolia Bakery, we went to Sprinkles, we visited every single bakery in Los Angeles, not to be mean and pick apart cupcakes, but to really do some market research. and. All of those um, purchases were tax write-offs. I could have used those to claim on my taxes, but I didn't know it then and I wasn't very good at tracking. And again, everything was commingled. So you can write off meals and entertainment. Anytime you go to dinner and you have a conversation about your business, that could be a write-off. Anytime you're investing in growth or learning for your business, that's also a write-off. And so there are so many things that you need to know um, in the very beginning so that you can track and monitor and just set yourself up for success. But most importantly, like taxes are a big thing. And so if you don't keep things in order for the whole year, it's gonna feel super overwhelming and daunting to file your taxes at the end of the year when your accountant has you scrambling and you're scraping through every purse to find all these receipts. It's just a nightmare. So track and monitor from the very beginning. Those are the five major mistakes I made in my business. Again, I hope that sharing this with you helps you to not make those same mistakes and helps you have major success in your business. I'm gonna link some free resources that I have for you down in the comments. If you are just getting started and you wanna know how to build a baking business, I've got an entire free training for you. If you wanna know some other tips that I have because I've got a list of 27 things I wish I would've known before I started a business, I've got that list for you too. And I've got tons of free resources on JanelleCopeland.com. So you can head over there. You can also connect with me on Instagram. I am at Janelle Copeland or also on TikTok. Either way, be sure to subscribe here for more information on how to grow your business, how to start a business, and just how to be successful in business. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.